welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. show how are you doing today very well thank you excellent well again thank you for taking the time to chat with me i really appreciate it and i'd like to start off by asking how you describe yourself and what you do um i have a five line mantra answer to that uh wife mother writer teacher bipolar okay excellent so, okay, well, let's unpack that a little bit. What? Well, actually, let's start with with uh, the writing and the teaching part. What made you interested in becoming a writer and also becoming a teacher? Well, I believe the first time I entertained becoming a writer, I believe I was about eight years old. I had checked out a book that talked about newspapers and how newspapers were made out of the library. And I remember reading and thinking, that's what I want to do. I was very young, and but um, something about it just drew me in to the world of news reporting and news writing. And that's what I decided I wanted to do from that point forward. Okay. So um, the teaching came later when I was um, applying to graduate school. Mm -hmm. And they told me that if I did teach English, I would be paid and I would get a tuition waiver and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of how the teaching came about. My mother was a teacher, so it came easily to me. But um, I consider myself more of a writer than a teacher. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's go in a little bit more into the teaching. So, um, so yeah, so you mentioned... Um, that that you uh, read some things and then wanted to study writing and journalism particularly. Is is that why you then went to school for journalism and writing? Yes, sir. Um, I graduated with a bachelor's in communication with a journalism emphasis okay. from Mississippi State University in 1990. Okay. And could not find a job, so I went on to graduate school in English and finished that in 1992. Okay, excellent. And then after that, it looks like you did uh, a little bit of a, a career as a freelance writer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and how was – so you wrote for a number of interesting publications. How was – how did that work out? Um, It was great. I love that job. I did book reviews. I did author interviews. I did theater reviews. I did restaurant reviews. I did a little bit of everything. I did some political reporting. I won an award in 2006 for my political reporting on um, politicians younger than 40. Mm -hmm. I did profiles on about eight of them. And that won an award from the Mississippi Press Association in 2006. Um, I also did food writing. I wrote gardening stories. I wrote travel stories. I just really, really enjoyed that job. And what sidelined me from it was bipolar disorder. Oh, sure. Why? So I'm I'm not as familiar with bipolar. Could you describe just a little bit of what, at least or what you feel comfortable on on talking about what it, what it means to be bipolar? Well, what happened to me was I had a nervous breakdown after the last child I had in 2005, mm -hmm. and it just continued on through 2006 until I was officially diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Generally, what happens, the, the popular conception of it and explanation of it is that you swing from mood to mood. Mm -hmm from manic highs to depressive lows, and those swings can happen either very quickly or very slowly. Mine is a very slow cycle. I'll spend, um, I'll spend some time manic, some time hypomanic, some time depressed, 
and then sometime climbing back up and starting the cycle over again. It usually takes about a year to run through all the moods, and um, I'll hit another um, crashing high, which is kind of a contradiction in terms, but that's how I think about it, Mm -hmm. and typically go to the hospital in the spring for suicidal thinking. Mm -hmm. Not every year, but a good many years I did that before we figured out how the cycle worked and how to avert it. Okay. Now, does this, does your cycle hit around the like the same triggers every single year, or does it vary year by year? Um, my daughter's birthday seems to be a trigger because that's when I first started having serious problems. Okay. And she was born in February, okay. so that's about when it starts. Sure, sure. Okay, so you were so. Before that, before being diagnosed with this, you were you were become you were a freelance writer. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, it sounds like an amazing one because you said you won some awards. So how at that point, how were you getting your your writing uh, assignments? Were you working for a, a company? Did the you know did each individual organization already have a relationship with you and, and contact you, or, or how did that work? Well, I started um, actually with a busted assignment. Um, I found a uh, art, uh, ad in the classifieds looking for freelance reporters for a new magazine that was opening, mm-hmm. and I wrote three stories for them, and they never published one line. They um, fell to pieces. So they fell to pieces. That particular organization did, but I still had three very good stories. And I just went to the phone book and started contacting publications in the area asking if they took freelancers. Okay. And um, it went from there. Those stories got placed, one in the largest newspaper in the state, based here in the capital city of Jackson, Mississippi. One, the um, most widespread business publication in the state of Mississippi. And a third in an award-winning children's um, and parenting magazine. So that's how I started off. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And then so, okay, so after you stopped doing that, did you go back to school then? Is Or how did that, so I guess after after being diagnosed with bipolar and going through that process, how did you reintroduce yourself into the to becoming a writer? I started writing novels. I had a story um, come on to me that would not let me go. About a, um, also in 2005, you may remember Hurricane Katrina came through Mississippi. Yes. And I had a story out of that come to me. And I started writing on this novel. And so when I got so sick, I could no longer do deadline work. I thought, I'll just start writing novels. Because I had one that I was almost finished with. I said, I'll just do that, get an agent and get published that way. And that did not quite turn out to be the way it was. Oh, sure. What, the, uh, so was it more difficult to find a publisher or to find an agent, or were they equally difficult? Um, it was equally difficult. I sent a good deal. I found an agent, actually, fairly rapidly. Okay. He was local to the area, mm-hmm. and I checked him out. He had helped several people that I knew publish books. And um, he had done a great deal of publishing himself. But what happened in the um, economic meltdown is that um, he was not able to sell ultimately anything that I wrote. So the publishers became the sticking point after the agent. Okay. Excellent. So, okay. So with that, did you, how did you then find or get your first uh, novel published? Actually, the piece that um, that I'm probably you're referring to is my novella, and it's mm-hmm. published in an anthology. Okay. It's called Looking for Home, and it was a piece that I had cut down. I had written a long novel out of it, about 300 pages, and on the advice of a reader, I cut it down to just one person's point of view, one direct storyline and came out with a novella of about 90 to 100 pages. I can't remember exactly what it is now, but that was Looking for Home. That was the second piece that I wrote, and that's the piece that was published by Running Wild Press okay. here recently. Okay, great. And so 
The other in so the other times where your your fiction has been published, has that also been through, I guess, the same kind of process, or how do you submit your your writing to be published? Well, I use Submittable a great deal, which is the platform that is um, very common for journals and other uh, publications to solicit work. And so I use that a great deal. Um, my MFA program has a lot of contacts with publishers and with journals, and I get a lot of leads from them. Mm-hmm. And um, some of it's just word of mouth. Okay. You know, I mean, just hearing that somebody needs a story and I send it out and either they take it or they don't. Yeah. Interesting. So I'd like to hear more about your writing process, particularly, because it, it looks like you cover a few different areas. You know, you, you've written plays, you're writing poetry, some fiction. How so where does your inspiration come from? And at what point do you decide to turn the inspiration into uh, poetry or nonfiction or a play? Well, a lot of what I've done is um, just taken stories and adapted them several different ways. Um, Hurricane Baby, the first story I wrote that came on me after Hurricane Katrina, Mm -hmm. was a, a first a short story. Then I developed it out into a novel. Then I developed it into a play, and that's the play that won the um, award from the Eudora Wealthy New Plays Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, the novella, Looking for Home, was actually rooted in Hurricane Baby. I had a thought that I would pick up the story much later on in one of the characters' lives and have her come searching for her birth father. Okay. And I never did have it turn out very well for Hurricane Baby, but I thought, I don't need to leave this story behind. I just need to find another way to tell it. And that turned into looking for home. Okay. Very interesting. So it, it does seem like you're very heavily influenced by by your personal life and, and the surroundings. What uh, when, when you're writing this, these stories... Are there times when you hit writer's block? And if that's the case, how do you keep moving past that so that you complete the the stories? I have to shut off my editor brain altogether to get anything down. Um, Because I can't really tell if how I can't really evaluate the quality of what I've written until I look at it much later. And so it was when I write it down, it all sounds great. Yeah. And so I just keep writing against the doubt and against the block and against the difficulty. Um, I recently got hung up on a story I was working on um, for um, National Novel Writing Month called Making Breakfast. And that was because I was working a voice that was unfamiliar to me. Okay. And um, I've. I've hit a stop on it because I just don't know where else to take the story. I, um, as far as writing it in that particular voice, I may come back to it and write it in another voice and it may become easier for me. Mm -hmm. But this, this particular one seems to have me stymied. It's a good little short story. It's good flash fiction piece, but as far as carrying it further, um, either I'm going to have to carry it further in a voice I'm more familiar with, or I'm going to have to just, Leave it a short story and call it a day. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So I'm curious to hear how your how being bipolar also affects your writing. Like, are there – do you notice particular influences that, that maybe come about because of it or, or not? Most of my nonfiction is about my bipolar story. I felt like that if I was going to have bipolar disorder, I needed to use it to help other people understand Mm -hmm. what mental illness is really like and what it's really about. And from the standpoint of someone who, um, even though it seemed to come on me very suddenly when I was 35, there were roots of it early in my life. I think I had my first manic episode when I was eight years old. And um, I've had depressive episodes and manic episodes throughout my life. 